Hey, beautiful people, it's Ryan Hamer here again. Again, I'm just continuing to talk to you guys about having uh, credit clarity and having the right mindset when it comes to your credit. Uh, not going, going to be talking to you about any tips or tricks. I'm continuing it on from my last video because I uh, got meta, meta, muddled. I had to stop it short for a minute. But anyway, getting back to the, having the right mentality when it comes to establishing your credit, maintaining your credit, uh, keeping it, and just feeling good about your credit. So I don't know uh, how many of you believe in meditation, how many of you believe in affirmations, but extremely, extremely powerful techniques. Telling yourself that you are worthy of good credit. So let's start by doing one right now. So I'm gonna close my eyes and I want you to close your eyes with me. And I want you to say, take a deep breath. Let it out, in, and you let it out. I am worthy of good credit. You say, repeat after me, I am worthy of good credit. I forgive myself for not being the person that I needed to be. I forgive myself for not being the person that I needed to be. Good credit is just around the corner. My good credit is just around the corner. Take another deep breath. Let it out. Open your eyes when you are ready. Just that alone, telling yourself that every single morning, forgiving yourself for not being the person you needed to be when you were younger, not being the person that you needed to be when you were in that bad relationship, in that bad friendship. You make mistakes. Sometimes you lend money to the wrong person. Sometimes you co-sign for the wrong person. Sometimes you'll do something for the wrong person. You'll take a phone out for the wrong person, pay somebody else's bill, and then you and that person have a falling out. You and your brother and sister stop talking. You and your boyfriend and girlfriend break up. Doesn't matter whether it was their responsibility. That's on your good name. So whatever you gotta do, you gotta clean that, you gotta clean that mess up. Deal with the fallout and the consequences later. Too many people allow pride to come in the way of them maintaining their credit. I'm gonna repeat that again. Too many people allow pride and the need to be right because they're in a fight, they allow that to become detrimental to maintaining a good credit score, fixing or keeping or repairing their credit. So a lot, you're going to make mistakes. It will happen, especially if you're new to credit, especially if you, you're, you don't read people well. And something could happen. Like So for example, there's a lot of people that are going to have bad credit right now. You've taken, you've taken a loan out for somebody or you did something for somebody or somebody co-signed. You co-signed for somebody or whatever. And we're in the midst of a pandemic. People have been down for two years almost job losses, laid off, whatever, and whatever you took out in somebody else's name, yes, you did it with the best of intentions and the good heart and all that stuff, but business is business and these people want their money. This other person is working for a company that hasn't been open for two years or whatever the case may be. So keep that in mind. You know, keep in touch with that person, ask them, hey, uh, you know what? I, I took this out in your name or my name is on it. I'm the guarantor. I'm the responsible one. I'm the one, this, the main uh, signatory. I'm the one that put my name down and my neck's on the chopping block for your uh, mistakes or for your whatever. And maybe it's not their fault that they can't afford to pay because they're not working. Understood. But it's affecting your credit. You are responsible. So keep that in mind. And when we talk about, so I have, a, I have a list, you know, where I talk about the credit commandments and certain things that you should and shouldn't do. 
And one of the commandments is, thou shalt not co-sign. I understand some of you have kids and you want to give your kids a leg up and you want to help them out and stuff like that. So you'll co-sign a car for them, you'll co-sign a house for them, you'll co-sign a phone for them, you'll do whatever for them. There's that old saying that if you can help yourself, you got to help yourself before you can help others. And you're not helping yourself and you're not... Pre- you're not providing yourself with a great foundation if your foundation is weak and if your foundation is muddled and if your clarity is, is, is foggy and out of focus. Now, it really is hard. I get it. I understand it. I respect it. I understand that a lot of people out there you know, may feel the need to do this for your kids, may feel the need to, to do this for your friend or your lover or whomever. But the fact of the matter is, there is nothing that covers you should anything go wrong, should, should stuff go sideways, should they misstep. You're going to be responsible for that. So always keep that in mind that you may very well have to come and bring your shovel and, and fix that. So getting back to the mindset, when you do things for people, when you do certain things for someone, Uh, Make sure that you have contingencies in place. So there are a lot of people that are going to be listening to this, watching this, and they're going to say, well, you know what? I have to do this for my kid. I got to do this for my girlfriend. I got to do this for my boyfriend. I got to do this for my homie. I got to do this for my whomever, for grandma, whomever. But the fact of the matter is, is stuff happens. And are you prepared? You got to be prepared to cover. Right? I'm not going to tell you how what you got to do, whether it means you put money aside just in case they default or just in case they can't make a payment or something like that. Because look, you help somebody get into a house, can they afford to pay you back? Right? That's the question you got to ask yourself because maybe they couldn't afford initially to do it all on their own. They had to come to you. We don't know. I don't know. There could be, there's an incalculable amount of stories out there where yours falls into play you will be the judge. You know, that's something you got to figure out and sort out for yourself. Just use your head and be smart about it. Know the person. There's Comedians usually have this, this thing where we say, know your audience, right? So you got to know your friend. You got to know your family member. You got to know the person that you're, you're putting your John Hancock down for. You got to know who you're signing on the dotted line for, right? And we have parents out there that know their children. They know the fallacy of the children. They know that their, their children will make st- mistakes. They know their kids. And that's why a lot of parents won't sign, sign, uh, co-sign for their kids because they know how irresponsible their kids may be. You know in your heart of hearts how irresponsible that other person will be. But do you listen to the voice? And when we get back to the mindset, how strong are you? How strong are you to say no to someone? Are you strong enough to, and do you have the willpower to say, you know what, Uh, bro, I can't do this for you. Uh, You know, girlfriend, unfortunately I can't. I've got a lot going on right now. I do not want to make this commitment. I can't make this commitment right now. I've got my own stuff that I got to deal with and I'd like to get a, you know, maybe I need to get a new car soon and I'm trying to get into a house myself. And worst mistake you can make is co-sign for somebody else so that they can get an apartment or a house and you don't have one yourself. You're still living at home or, or you're in another situation. So keep that in mind. Too many of us are so eager to be nice without realizing we're going to have to pay the price. Should that person mess up? And there is a percentage, a small or large, depending on the individual, and only you know that. Only you are able to make that determination and that judgment call with respect to whether that person is trustworthy or not. And sometimes it comes to comes down to a matter of trust. Right? Some people we have, oh, I've known them for so many years. It doesn't matter how many years you've known that person. Are they a trustworthy person? Who are they now? Who are they now? What is their credit clarity? What is their financial acumen? How do they deal with business? How do they deal with money? Some people are funny with money, whether they're your friend or they're they're your romantic interest and you don't know until you get in bed with them, so to speak. 
And these, unfortunately, are hard lessons that people learn, unfortunately, after it's too late. But with the right mindset, you can ask questions that you need to be asking. Is this person trustworthy? What's this person's track record with regards to borrowing and lending money? Have I ever lent this person money before? Have I ever, have I ever seen them discuss any financial situations before? If you've never had a financial discussion with this person about money, how are you so eager to lend them money without the slightest bit of concern that they may or may not pay you back? Or they may not pay the bill. And if they don't pay the bill, it's like the knee bone is connected to the hip bone and the, the default is connected to your credit score and your credit rating is connected to the collection agency. You know what I'm saying? Like one will, one domino will fall leading to another and so on and so on and so on. This person doesn't pay, goes into collections, default, credit bureau, whole other thing. Right, So you, you can avoid this whole situation before it even gets there. Because if you can't take care of your own stuff, how do you expect other people to take care of your stuff for you? If you're not responsible for your own thoughts, if you're not responsible for your own uh, financial house, you cannot be engaging with somebody else and contributing to the well-being of somebody else's financial house if yours is not in order. And when we talk about in order, it's not just about paying the bills, it's about up here. Because, you know, if you have a low financial self-esteem, there is a overspill, there is a ripple effect into other areas of your life that you're unaware of. And when we talk about a low financial self-esteem, what does that mean? Well, how are you with money? And where did you learn that from? Where did you learn the value of a dollar? You know, my father used to say that if you're not, if you're, if you're on time, you're late. And same thing with, you, with your bills, right? If you pay your bills just on time, then you better be careful because you're, you're close to being late depending on, you know, if you're doing it through internet banking or what have you and, you know, send it off today. It takes a couple of days to actually transfer to the, the third party. So try to pay your bills ahead of time, even if it's just a couple of days. Some people like to say, well, I don't like to pay my bills ahead of time because I don't want them making extra interest. You're completely missing the point, right? It, it's not about interest. And that's where a lot of people get confused. It's not about interest. It's not about the interest on the debt, you see? It's about the interest as a whole in the... It's about your interest in the actual, uh, in the actual financial product, the, the debt, the whatever it is. Don't worry about whether the company's making interest. It doesn't matter. You're making capital and personal interest. Good points. You know, we talk about, some people say, oh, that's bad juju to do this, to, to, you know, to skip out on a bill or whatever, right? But when you pay your bill on time, the expectation of you is to pay your bill on time. You, you, you're doing the least by paying it on time. Paid a little bit early, a couple days earlier, you don't have to worry about it. And you can automate the payment, right? You can set that up through your banking and have that done earlier if you can. Some of you people are living from paycheck to paycheck to paycheck. And I understand it's difficult because you're not able to, to manage your money until you actually get paid, which I see, I understand. But that's why when you get into the right mindset and you understand how to move your money, when to move your money, how to move your money, things get a little easier. A prime example of this would be like, say your car insurance, you drive, you got car insurance. You can be paying that monthly, right? Some of you may know that you have the ability to pay that in advance for the whole year ahead. You say you got two cars, you, you're living a family, you got two cars, your insurance is like $400 a month, right? That's $4,800 a year. What if you paid your car insurance in advance? 
you dropped that on one of your credit cards or you dropped it on your line of credit, you use your line of credit to pay that. Why is that beneficial? Well, then you have an extra $400 each month that you would have been paying into your insurance, but now you have that money available to you to either invest or pay another bill or save. And understanding that you can have money in an account that you don't have to spend is all a part of discipline as well. Because some people, you know, money in an account, money in a savings account is burning a hole. <laughs> it's like money in your pocket. And they don't realize that, you know what? Hey, I'm better off not touching this money and putting it over here. So I know, I'm, I know it seems like I've gone off on the rabbit hole, but it's a matter of really changing the way you think about money. Because it's great. Some people say, well, why would I want to give the insurance company that $4,800 in advance? They're going to make interest off that money and blah, 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 blah. you got to understand you're saving yourself the headache and the stress of having to find that $400 each month. And you can move that $400 to another debt or an investment or something like that. And but you're, some of you might be saying, well, Ryan, I, I still got to pay that $4,800 if it's on my credit card or if it's on my line of credit. Uh, yes, you do. But it's a displaced debt. You're moving it over to another, another, uh, you're moving it over to another instrument and you don't have to think about it. Like, so it's great if you do it in your, your line of credit because then you can use $1 twice. A lot of people don't understand that concept, but if you had the ability to use $1 twice, wouldn't that be great? It would, wouldn't it? So how is it that you're going to use $1 twice? Well, if you have a line of credit, or a credit card for that matter, and you have a sizable limit, say you had, uh, throwing out a number, say you had a line of credit with $10,000, say you had a line of credit with uh, $10,000, credit card with $10,000, you take that $4,800, we're talking about the car insurance, right? And you go and you pay that, car insurance in advance off of one of those instruments, and then you gotta pay back the line of credit or the credit card. Say you do it off the credit card. Then what you do is you pay off the balance on your credit card with your line of credit, and then you pay back the line of credit slowly. Why are you doing it this way? Because the interest is different. You see, uh, on your line of credit, it's simple interest. On your credit card, it's amortized interest. That's a whole other kind of explanation, so I'm just doing this so that you can understand. Uh, with, the, with the line of credit, your charge, the interest is calculated daily. So what you can do is you can you can divide uh, you can divide forty eight hundred, right? You take forty eight hundred and then you divide that by uh, what is it? Thirty? I guess we'll say thirty days in a month, just on average, right? Thirty days, yeah. You're looking at you're looking at yeah one sixty no. Or it's actually I did it the opposite the other way around. But anyway, long story short is the cost to borrow X amount of dollars per day. So you're going to be charged a certain amount of interest based on a daily, daily limit, a daily amount. So my point is, instead of paying 19% interest on your credit card, you've now moved that debt over to your line of credit, and your line of credit is most likely going to be under 10%. And that 10% is calculated and you're paying the daily amount of whatever that 10% interest is on that total amount that you bought. And the reason why you're going to do that is because it's easier for you. It's easier for you and you're going to have an extra $400 in positive cash flow. I know I'm going into like velocity banking and going into a different sort of a topic or what have you, but the whole point of this exercise and me explaining this to you is that so you'd learn that when you think differently you'll have more money available to you when you think differently you'll make better decisions when you think differently you won't get caught up in the same cycle when you think differently you don't have to live paycheck to paycheck to paycheck to paycheck so if that four hundred dollars amounts to an extra four hundred dollars on a paycheck or an extra, you know, four hundred dollars a month, like two hundred from each paycheck. That's an extra four hundred dollars that you have that you can do something else with. Think of how many other 
debts that you have that you have to pay monthly, which you might be able to think about and you could say, hey, you know what, if I can pay this in advance for the whole full year, I'd have that extra amount of money available to me each month. I know it's kind of hard to visualize when I'm showing it, when I'm just, it's just, I'm just a talking head here talking about it. So I'll probably have to revisit this and do another video where I kind of show you the, the topic of velocity banking and kind of how, how this might work. But I'm hoping that it just sort of whets your appetite a little bit and gives you an idea of when you think differently, the outcome can be different. It's very easy to say, I don't have any money. I don't have any money. I can't pay my, I, I just barely am getting by. I have to pay all my bills, blah, 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 blah. We all got a story. We all got bills to pay. But it's a matter of how are you paying the bills, right? There are lots of uh, cell phone plans right now where you can pay in advance, you pay as you go or what have you. How much are you paying for your cell phone plan? How much are you paying for your internet plan? If you know you don't go over the data, if you know that you have a certain limit or whatever, it's a certain level, then try and pay that stuff in advance. It'll free up some cash flow for you. So just in this example alone where we talked about the insurance, you know, that's $400, that's $400 a month we put aside. What if there were two or three other bills that you're able to pay in advance? So if you're able to pay those other bills in advance, then say you make you work your way up to $1,000. That's $1,000 a month that you have that you can put aside, that you can put aside, that you can put aside, that you can put aside. And then you can stack your paper, stack your money, and then maybe you'll be able to make a larger purchase, such as a down payment for a house or something like that. So these are things I want you to keep in mind. You have the control and you have the power. And power is something that People think that it's the credit bureaus that have, the banks have it, uh, everybody else has it, rich people have it. No. And, and how do you think rich people hold on to their money? They double their money. They invest their money. They make their money work for them. And if you don't understand how to make your money work for you, understand that somebody else is working you for your money. So there are people that know how the system works. There are people that know how to work within the system, and there are people that know how to work the system. And I'm not talking about anything illegal here. I'm just simply talking about they understand tax codes, they understand loopholes, and they understand different ways of moving their money. And there are a lot of people out there that understand that with the right mindset, with the right attitude, they'll be able to get further ahead. So... This exercise, this whole purpose of this video is for me trying to get you to understand that you have the power, you have the control, you have the discipline. You just don't have, you just may not necessarily have all the knowledge. But we'll, we'll touch on that in future videos. And, I, and I'm just giving you a couple of examples here so you can get an idea that so much more is possible. You are so much better than your existing situation. You are more than enough. And if you don't believe it, if you don't believe that, then nothing else matters. You have to believe in how powerful you are. You have to believe in how successful you can be. I don't care whether you just got out of bankruptcy. I don't care whether you have a lot of collections in your name. I don't care whether you have no credit in your name. It's possible for you to achieve a great deal better than what you have or what you don't have right now. Stop watching other people and stop envying other people's success because none of that matters. It's only your success that matters. It's only your future that matters. And if we don't manifest your potential future right now, you can't see it. I can't see it for you. You have to see it for yourself. So if you take nothing else from this video, take self-actualization, manifest in your thoughts because thoughts become things and things become bigger. Understand that. Let me repeat that again. Thoughts become things and things become bigger. Do not allow yourself. And if you think that I'm lying, I want you to think of a friend that says that they are ugly. 
I want you to think of a friend that says that they are poor. I want you to think of someone in your life who says, oh, I'm never going to get this. I'm never going to do this. Oh, I'm going to fail this. I'm going to fail that. They are speaking negativity and failure into their being, into their existence, into their day, into their week, into their year, into their life. And you that's tripled over. That's, that's rolled over because you heard it. Such that you could actually respond to it and say, you know, don't say that. Yeah, yeah, I do have a friend. I have an uncle or I have an aunt. I have a friend. I have a whomever like that. Oh, my ex was like that. Oh, my best friend is like that. She's always speaking negatively about herself or things or other people. And you understand how that negative, that negative attitude is pervasive and it can have a, it can have a, a ripple effect. And it can come over to you. So imagine if what they are saying to themselves about themselves or other people can have an effect over on you, imagine the effect that it's having on themselves. So that is essentially the power of negative self-talk. That's the power of you having the wrong mentality, you having the wrong attitude, and you not speaking positivity into existence. You can't handle, you can't handle a lot of money. You can't handle good credit. You can't handle great credit if you don't give yourself credit. I'll repeat that. If you don't give yourself credit, then there's no way that you're going to be able to maintain it once you do achieve it and receive it. But you got to believe it. You have to believe that you are more than enough. You have to believe that you are worthy of good credit. You have to believe that you can successfully manage it. You can successfully maintain it. You will learn. You can learn. If you have found any value in this video, I implore you to click the like button. I implore you to share this with your friend. I actually, friends and families and loved ones, I also implore you to watch this video again download it and just understand I believe in you if you don't believe in yourself right now I believe in you and I know that you can do great things you just gotta start so before you even pull up your credit bureau report and start crying before you even start obsessing over all the mistakes that you may have made or will make or whatever I need you to believe in yourself first Start with some of the exercises that I talked about. Self-actualization, repeating the mantras of believing in yourself, repeating some of the things that I said. You know what? I forgive myself for the mistakes that I've made. I am enough. I will do better. I will be better. I am capable. I am somebody. I love myself. I appreciate that I am here. I have my health. I have my, you know, whatever you have. Even if you aren't healthy, know that better days are ahead. Enjoy what you do have. Relish in what you do have. You know, we always talk about not being able to buy time. You know what? They say that the richest people in the world wish that they had more time. You've got time right now. You have time right now. So are you gonna use that time crying over the fact that you don't have enough money or that you can't pay this bill? Or are you gonna relish in the comfort of the fact that you have your health? You have time. You have time to improve. You have time to move. You have time to do better, be better. You have time. So stop telling yourself that it's too late because it's never, ever too late. Credit is a revolving door. It takes a long time, just like, you know, it's 365 days in a year, right? Each day is different. But there is a repeat, right? We come back 360. So it's the same thing with your credit. You might be in a bad spot right now or you might not have any credit, but we're going to work on that together. All right. We're going to work on that together. I'll do more videos of this where I share ideas on how you can improve your, your mindset and have better credit clarity. OK. Normally, these are things that people would hire me. I'd sit down and have a, a master class on this. And, you know, I would do a, have a whole course and work with people on this individually or 
group coaching and stuff like that. But I'm starting out right now to share a few of these ideas with you because I want you to do better. I want you to be better. I want you to feel better about yourself. My name is Ryan Hamer, and I love everything that's credit, everything relating to credit. I usually talk about credit in the Canadian, from the Canadian side of things, so I appreciate you taking the time to listen and watch this video. Credit clarity, it knows no borders, right? So if you're in the U.S., a lot of what I said still applies. If you're in Canada, a lot of what I said still applies. Whether you're in, you're, you're in the U.K., it still applies. Having the right mindset is crucial, it's critical, it's key so that you can see further and do better. Take care of yourself and each other. And remember, if you had any questions or comments or concerns, please feel free to drop a, a comment and uh, click the like button for me, will you? Have a good one.